Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to Lightroom Blog. While we do cover other things other than Lightroom, this video is about Lightroom and specifically we're going to talk about the histogram inside Lightroom. The histogram is located up here on the right hand side of develop. As you can see, we've got a little mix of colours in here, a few little bits and pieces going on, like these little triangles here with squares around them and as I jump across different sections we can see that what's happening down here is changing so it says highlights there if I move off there altogether we can see that we have information about our file and here we have a little thing that says original photo so let's talk about what's inside the histogram first and then jump to all the other bits so the histogram is a representation of the tones in the image and the quantity of those tones so as we look here, we can see there's nothing down here that indicates that there's nothing that's fully black. As we move across here, this is indicating that there's a lot of mid-tones in the image. And as we move across here to the very top end of this, we can see that there's very little high frequency stuff. So there's no, nothing super, super bright. So this tells us that we can actually do a little bit more with this image to increase contrast and things like that. Typically, people say that this is the kind of image that is a good histogram, but that's not true. What's in the image will definitely define what's in the histogram and while this may be a representative average histogram, it's not necessarily the right histogram for every image. So let's do a little fix here. And the great thing about this is you can actually drag on the image. So when I'm here in blacks, as I drag on the histogram, because he brings the blacks down to darken it, and I'm going to bring the whites up the whole way so that we have something fully white in the image. So we can see that we've greatly increased the contrast in the image and the saturation will increase with that contrast. Now because of the way it works within Lightroom that as we're pushing up these whites we can see that we're building up a little spike here. So it's doing its best to protect us from clipping. Highlight clipping is something that you want to avoid whereas shadow clipping is not as critical because sometimes things will go to deepest black. Now if you want to see where those things are you need to turn on these highlight clipping indicators and shadow clipping indicators. So just click that there. I'm going to bring the blacks way way down. So as you can see, this triangle is lit up to let us know that stuff is clipped. And these blue areas tell us in the image what is actually being clipped within. So if you want to bring it back, we can just bring it back a little bit from there. And uh, we still have some slight blue areas there saying that th these are deep shadows, even though this is not indicating anything. So we just pull that up a little bit. That'll get rid of it. And the same with the whites, we can bring it up and we can clip it. And if we turn on that clipping indicator, all of those areas in red are completely clipped. Again, we can turn it on directly by clicking on the triangle itself. Or you can use the J key to toggle the clipping indicators on and off. So I'm just going to bring it back so we can see we're just below everything being fully white in these clouds. So we've extended the tone there a little bit in this image. But it's not the only kind of histogram we can have on image. Let's say we've got a night scene. So here's a shot that I shot in London. And with the clipping indicators on, we can see that we've deep, deep shadows here inside Big Ben itself, or rather the clock tower. Uh, Big Ben is the name of the bell. So if I just bring that up a little bit there, we can see we've opened up and we're allowing some of that shadow detail back there. Now, I don't want it to, to come too far because what will happen is it's jumped a little bit because I'm using a, a tablet and it just likes to jump sometimes when I do that. So I'll bring it back down a bit more. I might even do it directly on the fader this time. All right on the slider and there we go so about 15 14 seems to have worked for that again this isn't although it's very very bright it isn't actually clipped according to this but as we can see here by looking at the histogram most of the tones in the image are down towards the left hand side which tells us that it's mostly dark tones in the image now we look at this if we were to have this in the middle so let's bring up the exposure so that clump is in the middle like the other histogram that we saw a minute ago. And we can see here that that isn't right, that this is way too bright and way, way overexposed. So let's double click to bring it back down again. And we see that it looks way, way better and it looks like what we're expecting from this kind of an image. In actual fact, it's probably not dark enough and I could bring the blacks down or what I could do is I could increase the contrast and that will help with that. Another example of a dark image is this one here. We can see in this one here, again, that most of the tones are down here towards the bottom. But yet we have all of this highlight clipping in the church as well. 
So we can see that we do have a full range of image. Now if we want, we can try and recover some of the blacks here by lifting up the blacks. And we can also open up the shadows. And then we can bring down the whites, which will be the brightest part of the image, and we can bring down some of the highlights as well. So we can see that that's kind of opened up our tonal range. We could probably bring in a bit of clarity to try and help the contrast within the local areas of the image and boost some contrast. Now, boosting contrast will darken the blacks and lighten the whites, so we have to be careful that we don't clip again as we do that. We can see that's improved this image. But we can see again by looking at the histogram, we have all of this low stuff here indicating that it's a very dark image, but yet when we look at the image, we can see that the actual content is all there in the image itself. So it's not like there's something actually wrong with the image. So we're going to go for something completely different here. And this is a high key studio image. And so we can see straight away because the clipping histogram is on is that this area is completely clipped. But this is a high key image. So I'm going to press J to hide those clipping indicators. We see that it's white. It's supposed to be white because it's a high key image. So most of the tones here, including the skin tones, are up towards the top. Now there isn't anything completely black in the image, but potentially we could bring our blacks down a bit, which will darken so that the black in the eye here becomes fully black. Now sometimes what happens with that is you might need to open up the shadow slightly, just so that you're not causing too much contrast. But again, as a high key image, we can see that the information is more towards the right of the image, which is exactly what we would expect from a high key image. So my point here is that there's no right histogram, but there are general histograms that will look good for particular things. So can we see in this image that we've got blacks, lots of black, we've got white in our t-shirt and we've got mid gray. So we can see here we've got blacks here that are clipped. Possibly open them up a little bit. We have our grays. So this is the grays in the image here. And then we have the white t-shirt, which will be this image here. Now this is obviously a process version 2010. So it's an older one. And that can be updated here in the histogram by clicking on it. We get this little update process version dialog, which is click update. And it will generally look the same afterwards. And if you haven't done too much to the image, it will generally look the same. So the blacks have changed in this one. So I'm going to double click on the blacks. Again, the newer version will also try and protect the blacks. So we can see we've got more detail down here. But again, if we hover over, we can see that there is still a little bit of blackness going on there. I don't mind it too much. Again, shadow clipping is not necessarily an issue in an image. But we can see that the balance is there. We've got our dark parts of the image, we've got our grays, and we've got our whites. So that's kind of a fuller balance of tones in the image. And again, another one that's a similar kind of a vibe. We've got a, a gray background. But in this case here, it's supposed to be gray, but it's not. It's kind of a little bit of magenta. And you can see that this split of colors is happening here. So if I grab my white balance tool and I click, that'll make it gray again. So the background's gray, but it feels a little bit green in areas. So I might try down here instead. So we can see here by looking at the spikes that they're a lot closer together. So it's saying that the colors are a lot more even, but then up here, they're a little bit more split. So these are things that you can tell by looking at the histogram itself. So very quickly, the other things that are in the histo histogram are you have these, you have your camera information, so you can tell your ISO, your focal length, your aperture and your shutter speed. We can see here that we have original plus smart preview. So that means that this image has a smart preview created. So if I go to a different image like this one here, uh, this one also has a smart preview. And I think, let me see now, there should be at least one of them with no smart preview. So this one just says original photo. So I click on original photo. We get an option to build a smart preview for this photo. We click build smart preview. So the smart preview is built and now this says original plus smart preview. If we had only the smart preview uh, and the file was disconnected, we could see just smart preview there, for example, as well. We can kind of cheat to make this happen as if the image was missing by just renaming the image. So I'm going to go command or you can go control or in PC. So it has our file name selected. So I'm going to click on it gently and put an E into it and press return. And now when we go back, we'll see it's swapped to just smart preview. So it's lost the original file. So we can see only the smart preview is there. The smart previews can be used to edit when files are missing or if you had say your images were on an 
an offline drive, like an external drive that's disconnected, you can still edit if the smart previews are created with a catalog on your main drive. So for example, I'm going to do an edit here, I click saturation, but I'm also going to zoom in because you can't zoom in too far on smart previews. You can zoom in much further on original images. So now I'm just going to control tab or command tab across to get back to my file name. And now I'm going to just get rid of that E. So that's renamed again. We go back to library and notice that the original zoomed in a little bit further. That's just the difference in size between the original and the smart preview. We can also see our edit is intact and we now have original plus smart preview again. So that's just a little bit on smart previews. So that's been a look at the histogram. So folks, I hope you enjoyed that and you got something useful out of it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up if you want to like the video. Hit the thumbs down if you don't want to like it. Plenty of people doing that too. Uh, leave me a comment if you have any questions. That'd be great or anything you'd like me to cover. Please do. I'm happy to talk about stuff. And uh, yeah, hit the notification bell if you want to get notified when I put up a new video. I'm trying to do at least two videos a week. Uh, getting there. If we can get into a good routine, I'd be happy with that. And I know you'd be happy with that as well. So I have one video of gear and photography related and one video of Lightroom. So thank you for watching. I do appreciate that you did take the time to do that. And I'll see you in the next video.